Welcome to Excel in Business Math video number 12. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about reducing fractions. We'll talk about factors, products, prime numbers, even ratios and rates. Now, here are our topics. And the main thing we're going to do in this video is we'll see how to reduce a fraction by hand. Then we'll see how to do it in Excel. We'll talk about why it's so important when displaying fractions in Excel. And we'll even talk about units in fractions, also known as ratios and rates. Now we're going to start by going over to our PDF file. Now there's PDF files for this exact video, number 12. And then there's PDF notes for videos 11 to 17. These are the PDFs for videos 11 to 17. Now I'm on page 4, and we got to remind ourselves what a factor is. Factors are numbers we can multiply together to get other numbers called products. Here are some factors. 2 and 12, when you multiply them, you get 24. These are the factors. That's the product. Hey, look at that. We have four 24s. We can have the factors 2 and 12, 4 and 6, 2, 2 and 6, and even 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Well, yes, in fact, that equals 24. Now, these are special type of factors called prime factors. And prime factors are going to help us when we reduce fractions. But first, we have to go to page 5 and define a prime number before we talk about prime factors. A prime number is a whole number greater than 1 whose only factors are 1 and itself. And guess what? They must be different. So 1 and itself always have to be two different numbers. It, for example, can't be 1 and 1, because then they would be the same, not different. Here's a list of some numbers. And 1 cannot be a prime because, well, because of our definition, greater than 1, but also because these two have to be different. 1 and 1, they're not different. 2, that's the very next number after 1. It's the only prime number that's also even. And why is it a prime number? Because we can only find these two factors, 1 and 2. Notice 2, that's itself. So we put a check here. That means that is a prime. How about 3? Well, the only factors we can find are 1 and 3, so we check. Yes, that's a prime. 4? Well, we can certainly list 1 and itself, but we can also list 2 times 2. So that means not a prime. We found something here that is different than 1 and itself, and that makes it not a prime. 5, well, the only ones we can find are 1 and 5. 6, as soon as we find something different than 1 and itself, we know it's not a prime. Now on the next page, page 6. There's a list of primes all the way to 179. Now, as an example, let's try and find all the primes for a particular number. What are all the prime factors in 27? Well, we're always going to start with the smallest prime. That means we're going to always start with 2, move up, checking whether it can divide into the number evenly. Evenly means with no remainder. So we're always going to use this list when trying to find all the prime factors. Here's what we do, and we'll go do this live. This I wrote this out, but we'll do it live here in just a moment. We start with 27. We're going to draw a line. I'm going to try and divide 2 into it evenly, but it won't go evenly. So that's the first prime. Since that one didn't work, we move to the next one. We try to divide 3 into 27 evenly. Oh, it works. There are exactly nine threes in 27. All right, so we put another line, and we ask the question, does 3 go into 9? Yes, it does. There's three threes in 9. We draw another line. Is there 3 in 3? Yes, there is. Oh, look at that. There's exactly one. So there are our primes. Now, we'll see a trick over in Excel that will actually help us figure out these primes here. Now I'm going to go to the next page. Here are the steps to reduce fractions. We first break apart the numerator and denominator into prime factors, just like that. 
then we cancel when a prime factor is in both the numerator and the denominator. So for example, 2 and 2, they're both in the top and bottom, so we cross them out. We can't find any other common prime factors in the top and bottom, so that's the reduced fraction. When we multiply it back out, we're left with 8 thirteenths. Now I want to go do this on paper, and then I want to go do this in Excel. All right, so we're going to do this by hand. 16 divided by 26. Now I have to list all of the prime factors for 16 and 26. So I come over to the side, and I write 16. I draw my line. Now I start with the first prime, 2. Does 2 go into 16? Well, yes, it does. So I put a 2 there. How many times? 8 times. So I put an 8. Now I put another line. I'm still on 2. So I say, hey, how many 2's are in 8? Well, it divides evenly 4 times. Now I draw another line. Does 2 go into 4? Well, you betcha it does. 2 goes into 4 2 times. I draw another line. I'm still left with 2. 2 goes into 2 1 time. These are the prime factors. So now we can come and write them in the numerator. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now we come over to the side and list the denominator, 26, draw our line, and ask, how many 2's go into 26? Well, there are 13 2's in 26. So I write 13. Now looking through my list of primes, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. 13 is a prime. So guess what? I am done. I write a 13 right there and a 1. Now I can write the prime factors in the denominator, 2 times 13. Now I'm ready to look in the top and bottom and try and find any factors that are the same and then cancel. There's a 2. There's a 2. And guess what? Those are the only two. So I can rewrite 2 times 2 times 2 over 13 equals 8 divided by 13. And there is our reduced fraction. Now this was how to do it by hand. Let's go over to Excel and see how to do it in Excel. All right, over here in Excel, we're on the sheet Reduce Fractions. Now here's example one, same fraction. We just did 16 divided by 26. Step one, list all the prime factors for numerator and denominator. Now, this is the step where Excel can help us. Oftentimes, it's easier to cancel and do those kind of things over on a piece of paper. But let's try it. We're going to list all of our prime factors. Here's the numerator. Now, remember, we start at 2, then go to 3, 5, and so on. Here's a list of the first few primes. So for 16, well, I know that 2 goes into it. So I'm going to type a 2 tab. And this is where Excel can help us. We can do a formula. Equals up arrow to get the numerator divided by our first prime factor. Now Control Enter. Because it gives me a whole number, I know that is evenly divisible into 16. Now I can come down here. 2 goes into 8. So I type a 2 in tab. But watch this. We don't have to recreate the formula. If I go up here and hit F2, notice these are relative cell references. The blue one is always one cell above, and the orange one is always one cell to the left. So I can simply copy it down. Oh, look at that. A whole number, so I know that's one of the prime factors. Now, I don't even really have to copy it down one at a time. I can copy it down however far. For the time being, I'm going to get F2, a divide by 0 error, but no problem. Enter. I can come over here. 2 goes into 4, so I simply type a 2. Enter. I know 2 goes into 2, so I type a 2. Enter. As soon as I see a 1, those are the prime factors. Now I can come over to 26. I can type a 2 tab, I'm going to do my formula, equals up arrow divided by left arrow, Control Enter, and copy it down. Now I have a whole number, so I know 13 twos are in 26. Now the next trick is, what prime do I put here? Well, I start with my list. 
And actually, as I look down, I immediately see, wow, 13 is a prime. So I type 13 and Enter. I see a 1, so I know these are the prime factors for 26. Now, this is the step where Excel can make it easy. The remaining steps, step 2, list all the prime factors in the numerator and denominator. That's sort of hard to do in Excel. This step is usually easier to do on a piece of paper. Also, when we cancel numerator and denominator, we could do that over here in Excel using strike through. But again, it's much easier to do on a piece of paper. We do end up like we did on our piece of paper with 8 thirteenths. That's the properly reduced fraction. Now, why is this important for us using Excel? And I want to create two formulas using our fractional formula. We're just going to type the numbers in equals 16 divided by 26. Enter. Now I'm going to come down here, equals 16 divided by 26, and Enter. So if you haven't reduced it and you're not sure what the reduced fraction is, you might do this. Click in the cell, go up to the drop down, select fraction. I immediately see it's suggesting 5 eighths. Maybe you think that's right. But if you go ahead and reduce as we just did, we know that this should be an 8 slash 13. So as we learned last video, we can use Control-1, Format Cells dialog box, Number tab, Category. Well, we go down to Custom. Type text box. We highlight and we type question mark slash question question. The question mark gives us digits. We need one digit in the numerator, two in the denominator. We can see the sample is perfect. Click OK. So that's why we actually have to somehow, whether on a piece of paper or with the aid of Excel, figure out what the correctly reduced fraction is. Now, you can prove to yourself that these two numbers are not the same. Come down here, equals 5 divided by 8, Enter, equals 16 divided by 26. And I'm going to hit Enter. And pretend for a moment you know, you weren't paying attention. You highlight these two. You come up. I'm going to add some number formatting. So you come up and you apply. Oh, they're equal. 5 eighths, 5 eighths. Well, we know that when number formatting is applied, it only displays it a certain way. It does not change the underlying number. We can actually use a logical formula to prove to ourselves that those two things are not equal. Equal sign, up arrow, up arrow. Equal sign. Remember, as we studied in video number six, this is a logical formula, and we're allowed to use the equal sign as a comparative operator. I can ask the question, hey, are those two cells equals? Of course, when I hit Enter, what? They're not equal. Of course not. The formula does not see that number formatting. It looks at the underlying numbers, and they are different. All right, so we don't want to fall prey to applying a number formatting and thinking that the fraction is properly reduced or even properly displayed. All right, here's example number two. We need to reduce 42 divided by 154. We'll start by listing our primes. We're going to list them for 42, Enter. Well, here's the list. That looks like 2 will go in, so I'm going to type a prime. 2, Tab, Equal Sign. There's Up Arrow divided by Left Arrow, Control, Enter. So it looks like when we divide 42 by 2, we get 21. Now I'm going to copy this down. I'm going to get a bunch of divide by 0 errors. But this is what I like about this method. Now I can try the next prime in the list, 3, Control, Enter. Oh, look at that, evenly divisible. So now I'm going to come down here, 5. Well, I already see 7, so I'm going to type a 7 right here. I see a 1, so I know I'm done. Those are the prime factors for the numerator. Now I'm going to delete these. Come over here, List Primes tab, and this is going to be for 154 and Enter. It looks like that's an even number, right? So I'm going to start with the 2 tab. Equal sign, up arrow, divided by left arrow. Control, Enter, 77. Drag it down. Now, if I didn't know automatically or quickly what numbers divide 77, 
The advantage to this method here is I can just start and try these. So I'm going to try a 3, Control-Enter. I get a decimal, so I know that doesn't work. Now I'm going to try a 5, Control-Enter. That doesn't work. Now I'm going to try a 7. That works. I'm looking down here. It looks like there's an 11. So I type an 11 and Enter. And I'm done. As long as I'm putting in prime numbers from my list and I'm getting a whole number result, that is a great method. I'm going to delete those. Now, if I end up doing this a lot in Excel, I could click on the cell. I want to put a line through it like I'm canceling in the numerator and the denominator. Control-1 would give us format cells font. And I could come down and click Strike Through. But surprisingly, and actually you can check this and see there's a little preview there. I'm going to uncheck this. Surprisingly, there is a keyboard for Strike Through. And I'm going to list it right here, Strike Through. Control-5. There's a keyboard because it is very common. Now, normally people aren't using Strike Through to cancel out primes and fractions. But people use strike through to cross things out on a list in Excel. So Control-5, oh, look at that. It gives me a little strike through, Control-5. 3 is not in both places, but 7 is Control-5. 7 here is Control-5. Looks like I'm left in the numerator 3 and 11. Right click Mini Toolbar. I think I'm going to add yellow. Right click Mini Toolbar Yellow. Now I'm going to click here, type Reduced, Control Enter, and I'm going to copy it down. Here I'm going to create the formula equals 42 divided by 154, Enter. Here I'm going to create the formula equals 3 divided by 11, Enter. Now I can highlight both cells. Control 1 over to number, down to custom, and in the type, question mark slash question question. And there it is, three 11s. Click OK. All right, so I added a little formatting there. Let's go look at example three. Now, example three is an example we saw last video. This is in our PDF notes. Four tests, the possible points, that'll be the denominator, your score for each individual assignment, the total of your scores, that'll be the numerator. This is the part of the whole or total. Now let's go ahead and make our division, create a fraction. Equals, there's the numerator. We're comparing the part divided by to the whole. Enter. Now I want to select that cell, and I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to go up to the drop down and select 7 eighths. But anytime I do that, I have to verify. So let's verify. I've actually listed over here denominator with the units. The actual units of the denominator are possible points. Numerator, those are the earned points. The actual unit is earned points. So when we do the division, we're going to be able to use the units to describe the fraction more accurately than if we left the units off. Now, the first thing is I have the denominator. So I want to try, actually, I'm going to create the formula first. Equals up arrow divided by left arrow. Control Enter and copy it down. All right, now I'm going to put a 2 here, Control Enter. So I get 200. Looks like that's even, so I can put a 2, Enter. Still got 100, 2, Enter. Got a 50, 2, Enter. A 25. Now I'm going to try, and notice this is a picture here, so you can move it around. Maybe I try 3. Probably all of us know that 5 times 5 is 25. But if we didn't, 3, that's a decimal, so that doesn't work. So I try the next one, 5. Ah, 5. I complete the process by putting a 5. And when I see a 1, these are the prime factors that go in the denominator. Now let's do the same thing for 350. Equals up arrow divided by left arrow, Control Enter, copy it down. Now I'm going to come over here. Um, does that divide by 2? Yes, it does. That's an even number. 175. Well, now I'm going to try 3, Control Enter. Nope, that's not it. I'm going to try the next prime, 5. Oh, 35. I'm going to try 5 again. 
Yes, indeed. And look at that, 7. That is a prime in our list, so I put a 7. As soon as I see the 1, those are the prime factors. Now I'm going to use Control-5 and Control-5. No more 2's over here. Oh, look at that, 2 5. So I'm going to highlight both Control-5 to do strike through. 2 5's, Control-5 to do strike through. Now it looks like I'm left with, in a yellow cell, there's a 7. And over here, we have 3 2's. So 3 2's multiplied by each other. Well, if you're not sure what that is, I'm going to multiply them straight or simply use the product function. Product. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Over here, I'm going to say equals and just click on that cell. So it looks like we have 7 eighths. We verified that this built-in number formatting is accurate. That's listed as a reduced fraction. Now, last video, we saw how to list 350 divided by 400 with 400 in the denominator. And sometimes that's what you want. But this time, what's nice about this especially if we say 7 earn points divided by 8 possible points. When we leave the units in our fraction, then we can say for every 8 possible points, you earn 7 earn points. And actually, the meaning of this fraction, 7 eighths, if we just be sure and list the units, we could say 7, 7 earn points divided by 8 possible points. You can read it two different ways. I got 7 earn points for every 8 possible points. Or you can read this, for every 8 possible points, you earn 7 earn points. Now that's a perfect segue because we actually want to talk about what happens when we have units in a fraction like this? I want to go back over to our PDF notes. We're actually going to go to the notes for videos 11 to 17, and I'm on page 3. Now, we looked at this example last video, assignments, max points, your score. And there's the total. That's the part we're comparing to the whole or total. Now, down here, we're listing the units, 7 points divided by eight possible points. I like what we did over in Excel. These are actually your earn points. Now, those are the units. And we'll come back and expand on that idea in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to talk about one other important reducing fractions tip. We have 350 divided by 400. I did not list all the prime factors here. Now, listing all the prime factors will always work. Sometimes if you list factors in the top and the bottom and leave something like this, maybe you'll miss a particular prime factor. But watch what we did. We noticed that there was a 0 in the top and the bottom at the end of both numbers. So really, it's like multiplying 35 and 40 by 10. Well, anytime you see a 0, 0 at the end of both numbers, you can automatically cancel those because it's really just like multiplying by 10. Now, I went on and took 35 divided by 40 and broke that apart. Notice I didn't list all the prime factors. I knew that 5 times 7 and 5 times 8 could be listed, and I canceled the 5s. Now, I'm left with 7 eighths. Now, this 8 down here does have three prime numbers, 2, 2, 2, in it. But because we were left with a single prime number in the top, boom, I knew I was done reducing. Now we're going to expand on this idea a little bit more. Let's go to page 8. So on page 8 in the PDF notes, 30,000 divided by 600. Well, really, that's 300 times 100 and 6 times 100. So I can cancel the hundreds. So the pattern for us will always be, if we have the same number of zeros at the end of the numerator and the denominator, we can simply cancel them. So we could have skipped straight from this, canceling the two zeros to 300 divided by 6. Now, there's still some prime factors in both of them, and we could reduce all the way to 50. But reducing rule for zeros at the end of both numerator and denominator, there it is. It's simple. 
just cross out zeros that are both at the end of numerator and denominator, and it will help us to reduce more quickly. All right, let's go to our next page, page 9. And we want to talk about ratios. Ratios are a certain type of fractions or division. A ratio is a quotient, yes, fraction division, of two quantities that is used to compare the quantities. And here's our two examples, one, two. If we have 300 miles and we drove those 300 miles in five hours, we can make this division. Now, I wanted you to notice something. When we reduce the fraction, we can do it listing our prime factors. They both have a 5 in the numerator and denominator. We're left with just 60. But the key to understanding ratios, because we're comparing miles and hours, is to keep the unit in the numerator and the denominator, and leave a 1 in the denominator. That way, we can read this as, for every one hour, we drove 60 miles. Now, in math, division can be represented by the word per. So you oftentimes hear this as 60 miles per hour. Now, here's a business example, a very common one. When looking at a company, you can look at their profit and their revenue. And if you list the profit, this company had $15,000 profit in the numerator and keep the unit, then list the revenue, 100,000, and the unit in the denominator. When we go to reduce this, notice we're using our zero trick. We are left with 15 bucks in the numerator and 100 bucks in the denominator. But if we leave the units, profit and revenue, the meaning of the ratio becomes more obvious. Now, we can continue to reduce this. And if we reduce this with prime factors, we get $3 of profit for every $20 of revenue. Now, if we go ahead and do the division and get a decimal, look what we get. And this is actually reported on most companies' financial statements, the amount of profit for every $1. So if someone says, hey, calculate the profitability ratio, that's what this is, you'd simply take total profit divided by revenue. But if you keep the units in the denominator and numerator, the meaning of it is obvious. For every $1 of revenue, 15 cents of profit. You could even think of it this way. For every $1 that comes into the cash register for this business, 15 pennies is kept as profit. So I call this the meaning of ratios rule. Always keep the units in the numerator and denominator, and keep a 1 in the denominator. And you can always figure out what the ratio means. Now, in business and accounting and finance, there are hundreds of different possible ratios that help us figure out information about the business like this one here. How profitable are they? For every $1 that comes in, how many pennies do the owners get to keep? Now let's go over to Excel, and we're on the sheet Units and Ratios. Now here's the example we just did, company revenue, company profit. I'm going to say equal sign profit is going to be the numerator divided by revenue as the denominator. 0.15. 0.15. But let's keep the units. Notice that's 15 pennies, and there's the unit in the numerator. So 15 pennies of profit for every $1 of revenue. Now I'm going to write this over here. So 15 pennies of profit divided by, always keep the 1 in the denominator, and then list the unit. For every $1 of revenue, we have 15 pennies of profit. Now profit listed right there, that's also known as the net income. Another synonyms is earnings. Now, I went ahead and looked out on the internet and got Google's revenue and profit and Caterpillar's revenue and profit. So let's go ahead and calculate the profitability ratio equals whatever the profit was or net income or earnings for 2015 divided by the total revenues for that same year. So wow, for Google, that's a lot. That's a big profitability ratio. Now, instead of saying profitability ratio, take what you see here. And if we rounded it 
not using the round function, just manually. There's the penny position. If I look to the right, it's five or more. So I'm going to hack all the decimals off. This would be 22 pennies profit for every $1 of revenue. So I'm going to write this over here. So there's the 22 pennies of profit, always keeping the 1 in the denominator, and then listing the unit. Wow, that's pretty good. Let's see what it is for Caterpillar. Equals, hey, there is the net income or profit or earnings divided by the revenues. Wow, hey, that's still pretty good. 5.3 pennies. Not quite as good as Google, but pretty good. Definitely better than zero or minus. Now, if I was rounding this by hand, I'd look at the position, look to the right. That's four or less. So I hack everything off and leave it a five. I can type that out. There's the five pennies of profit for every, remember, the one goes in the denominator, revenue. Now, let's scroll down and look at example six, homework or screen time. So you were monitoring last week, and your total screen time for the week was 45.5 hours. And we'll define screen time as phone, computer, TV, movies, Xbox, all those things, except for the time you spent on the computer doing homework. Some classes, you don't have any computer time. My classes, you have mostly computer time. And then here's the total hours spent doing homework. Uh-oh, that seems like trouble. Now, we could do this either way. We could take, as we're going to, screen time divided by hours. You could do the reverse also. But let's do as the numerator equals, there's the screen time divided by total hours in the week tab. And look at that, 5.35. If I rounded this manually, I'd look at that position, look to the right. It's four or less, so hack everything off. 5.35. Remember, that goes with the units in the numerator. So that screen time hours. So I'm going to write that here. So I got 5.35 hours of screen time. And remember, the 1 always goes in the denominator. This is, wow, so 5.35 hours of screen time for every 1 hour of homework. And I better get rid of that S. All right, let's go look at example 7. Target in the last hour, total customers and total items purchased. Total items purchased in the last hour, total customers in one hour. If we want to calculate the ratio items purchased to customers, we simply take equals, there's the items purchased, divided by our customers, tab. So it looks about 8. 8, that's the numerator. So eight items purchased per customer. Now our trick, eight. So eight items purchased divided by, always putting the one in the denominator, the unit, customer. So one customer. And there we go. All sorts of different ratios. Now we have one last topic. Let's go over to not reduced. And we actually already did this last video. But this video, we're talking about reducing fractions. So we took 350 divided by 400 and reduced it. But sometimes we don't want to show it as a reduced fraction. So just to remind you, Control-1, if our goal is to show 350 over 400, we can go over to Fraction and look through this list. Just as we saw last video, if you choose any one of these built-in ones, it's just not going to show you a non-reduced fraction. Now, you can search through this list, but there's no 400. So no problem. We're going to go down to Custom. And just as we did last video, I want three digits in the numerator and three digits, very specific digits, in the denominator. So I do question, 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 slash, and then simply type in the number I want as a denominator. Now, anytime you do that, it is hard coding it into the number formatting. So if this isn't going to change, or you really have to display it that way, that's how you do it. We're displaying a particular fraction that is not reduced. Click OK. All right, now in this video, there are five homework problems that you can go and do. And we talked about reducing fractions. 
Our last example was, well, what do you do if you want to display it not reduced? We very importantly talked about units and ratio. We did a bunch of different ratios on this sheet. For example, taking total profit and dividing it by revenue. And we learned the trick, keep the units in the numerator and denominator and keep that one. And it will help reveal the meaning. Then we talked a lot about on reducing fractions, how to reduce fractions in Excel. And that's important because if you use the built-in number formatting, you may display a number that's much different than the underlying number. And in the PDF notes and our PowerPoint presentation, we saw how to reduce fractions on a piece of paper. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including our next video, number 13, where we'll talk about converting mixed numbers to fractions and vice versa. All right, we'll see you next video.